I'll, I'll give you the floor. Um, people who may not have seen your piece, it is beautiful, and it strikes at the heart of the the um, the sadness, but also, uh, I guess, uh, commemoration that this weekend is for Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant. I'll give you the floor on on this story about Jordan and the the final communication between he and and Kobe. Well, I, th I think, Rich, those of us close to the game knew how much Kobe reached out to Michael, but I'm not sure that general fans did. Um, and particularly near the end of his career, Kobe was talking to Jordan all the time, calling him at all hours of day and night. And, you know, Michael was the first to admit at times it was kind of annoying even because he had made the famous proclamation, hey, if you ever need anything, give me a call. And boy, did Kobe call again and again and again and again. And so that's how this relationship became so strong. Michael is very different um, from Kobe in, in this one way. And you were around Michael, so you know this. He wasn't big on letting everybody in on what he was up to. Hmm. He very much kept it to himself. He didn't court uh, journalists the way Kobe did. Kobe was brilliant at it. I remember when Kobe passed, how many of my colleagues were like, well, I was really close with him. Everybody felt like he was. <laughs> Kobe had that gift to make you all feel like you were on the inside, right? He was good at that. Jordan, much more private. So I think that's uh, why we didn't know the depth of this relationship. I did a, One of the final pieces I did on Kobe was examining all the role models that he had, all the people that he looked to to become the best that he could be, and including Michael Jackson. You know, he was he was tapping into Michael Jackson and asking him, you know, he went up to Neverland and asked him about uh, how he learned to, you know, do Smooth Criminal. And Michael Jackson showed him films of Fred Astaire. And he said, you've got to learn from all the greats. Go out and learn from all the greats. And so that's what, that's what Kobe did. He called Larry Bird on the golf course. You know, he very famously went down and spent a weekend with Hakeem Olajuwon so he could learn how to play out of the post. He hit up Dr. J and, of course, Magic and Jerry West and all the great uh, Lakers that he was around as a young player. And, uh, and of course, he hit up Jordan. And I think uh, Jordan, to him, was who he wanted to be. He wanted to be better than Jordan. And Jordan came to view him as his little brother. And I thought the most, uh, you know, this piece that I did the other day, the thing that I thought was most interesting, while well, the, the final text is heartbreaking for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that, I, that jumped out at me that Michael said was, I think Kobe was mentally tougher than me. How many people can say that? And yes. Jordan, I don't imagine he'd say it about anybody else. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, listen, he wanted to be me. And all my fans disliked him for it. They said, stop trying to copy the greatest of all time. You're never going to get there. And he didn't listen. He just put his head down and continued to do that anyway because their games were so similar. And so that, to me, was quite an admission from the great Michael Jordan, who, who obviously is going to be here this weekend and will stand up on stage with Vanessa uh, mm. to help induct Kobe into the Hall of Fame. Jackie McMullen here on the Rich Eisen Show. Again, that piece is on ESPN+. Plus. Um, the last communication between Jordan and Bryant, you know, and... You know, I, uh, it, it did hit me, just the fact that he's saving this, right? Like, he just won't. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And, and it was um, sent in I'm December, sure right? Like it was that in your life, right? Well, I mean, so I, I've lost people in your life. You Jackie, know? I'll I'll share with you, since you just brought that up. I was literally sitting there thinking, do I share it? I still have the last, I still have the last voicemail that my dad sent me on my phone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I won't erase that. You know, and it's, no. it, you know, and, yeah. it, and, and. and so, uh, what, what, just walk me through what, you know, Jordan's thought process of, of keeping it. Because obviously we all have that. Sure. But, you know, and it was sent right. to December, right? The December before he passed. December 8th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was December 8th, right around the holidays. And Jordan got a text that, uh, it was right around after noontime, about 12 18. And Kobe said something like, well, this tequila is awesome. Because, you know, Jordan had started the Socorro label with, um, actually with Jeannie Buss of the Lakers and Wick Grosbeck of the Celtics and, Wes Edens of the box, they had all kind of combined to do this, uh, this great tequila, and he had sent Kobe a bottle of it at the launch, and so he said, oh, thanks, you know, you good? Sure, family good? Yep, yep, everybody's good. And uh, so Jordan just got a real kick out of the fact that Kobe was coaching Gigi. He just thought that was wonderful, and like anything Kobe does, had really thrown himself into it. So he decided to have a little fun, you know, as he said, so we'll catch you, you know, happy holidays, and what's, what's this about Coach Kobe? And he said, yeah, you know, you know it, man. And he said, I'm sitting here on the bench right now. We're blowing them out, 45 to 8. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last communication between them. And as um, 
as Jordan said, the reason I saved it is just typical Kobe, just the competitiveness <laughs> of him and how much Kobe had really wrapped himself up in his family uh, in his retirement. You know, it's funny when, not funny, but when, right. when Kobe passed, I was skiing, actually, with my family. My, my daughter lives in Colorado, and literally a stranger came up to me on the mountain to tell me. I didn't know. I had my phone in my, my ski jacket, but I wasn't looking at it. I was on vacation. And when he told me, of course, I went inside. My phone had blown up. So I left the mountain. I went home to write, and I started calling around. And so many of the, the people that I would have guessed Kobe was sort of close to said, you know, I was close to him, but really he had thrown himself into his family. His circle was small. It was very, very small. And I remember I texted Michael that day, and I said, look, I know this is really hard. Um, what are you thinking? And he said, too devastated. I have no words. Because he was part of that inner circle. 